week session if you have gone to it <clears throat> it's one of the fundamentals we talk about the impurity of the mind past impressions or you can say the warehouse of the mind uh, it contains all the good positive negative past impressions your past experiences good bad high low experiences how many times you were irritated in the past is already there in that warehouse it doesn't go away unless i consciously choose to go away so now the problem is the problem and the challenge both is there that you know when we meet someone we start with hi how are you good morning <laughs> but behind this speech that warehouse of impressions are present we don't know when i will lose control when i get angry or when i get irritated are you understand it is with everyone including me so that warehouse in fact controls controls my behavior my action and if i change if i change that it's very important previous session and this session every session is important so you see that you know hello how are you good you know I am saying it, but behind that speech, the warehouse of the mind contains all those negative impressions are awaiting its expression. When they express themselves, the moment we lose our awareness, when we are dictated by uh, the second factor that we talked about, last week sankalpa and the vikalpa that mind through the sense organ goes outside particular watches and observes the situation and based on the impressions that is already present in the mind makes creates a thought process and that thought process takes the form of a desire and then the desire takes the form of a speech and the action. And I told you already that desire, has, desire converts into six different forms. Desire, it is the same desire which becomes the greed or hesitation. It is the, so all the three together have, creates a delusion. Ah, I told you. Now, I just said, how, how are you? Good morning. No, I told you, no, I'm not interested. Does it not happen to all? I'm also including myself. <laughs> so you see that now you know, oh, that warehouse of the impression undergone a process and that is manifesting in my behavior, speech, and action in my daily life. So all those six, six uh, uh, forms of the desire converts into the impure states of the mind that I have already talked about it. You can also create other impure states of the mind. Noise disturbing. You can create for John noise disturbing mind. Initially, it was fire station, and in the last session, it was, it was what? It was wind. So you can create, you know, all those impure states of the mind. So we perceive in that way. Understand it clearly. Uh, so you are sitting with your honey, and internally you have an irritated mind. <laughs> Is it not true? Say yes, please. <laughs> John says, no, I don't have that. I have irritation with the wind or the fire station, but I don't have irritation. <laughs> <sighs> I know the husbands are always scared, so 
say no, it's okay. So anyhow, so now uh, that that is what happens, and uh, because because uh, master our master says that if we continue to live with these impure states of the mind, it impacts our personal, professional, social, family life. It it also impacts our health. No, it also impacts our including the health, personal life, professional life, social life. And so what happens, you know, in the society, you go there, oh, don't talk to the child, you know, she will get upset if you say this. You know, we all know about each one. No, just an example, I'll give an example. So are we aware, are you aware we are, you are attending a session with pure or the impure states of the mind? So it, it, the journey, journey takes us to a live event all the time, whether I'm talking to someone or working or working or driving or any activity in the life. So it means though that impure states of the mind continues to chase me, I have to purify this mind. If I don't purify this mind, uh, we, if we, if we are desiring for awakening and realization, that is not going to happen. So we don't know the basics and we say, okay, let us meditate one minute of instant meditation or five minutes of instant meditation. That is not going to work at all. All actions, each and every action, including speech, depends on the thought process. Any thought, every thought depends on the state of the mind, whether it is pure and impure. I'm reversing. I make you reverse understanding, you know. We have reverse engineering. And states depends on the past impressions, impulses, habits, or you can say the warehouse of the mind. And the warehouse contains both the impurity and the purity. And that causes, that creates the positive and the negative impression at a particular moment. And we are removing those negative impressions from the warehouse. We want to keep the positive impressions. Why? Because that will keep the mind totally transparent. Where the real self will be reflected, that is known as awakening. The mirror is dusty, so... Or, you know, the mirror is distorted. So then even my face will be distorted in the mirror. So the mirror, uh, which is the mind, has to be transparent, clear, pure, so that the real self of the nature of peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom is reflected. And that is what is known as awakening. So I have talked a lot about this impure states of the mind. But we should also a little bit understand what is this purification, what is this pure states of the mind, pure states of the mind. So pure states of the mind. <clears throat> pure states of the mind, calm mind, always remains calm, peaceful mind. We can say that we peaceful mind. Hmm? Peaceful mind. So we already know, compassion mind. Uh, you can use it. Discernment mind, dispassion mind. So if you have a discerning mind, it prevents the strong likes and dislikes. It prevents you from falling into anxiety. Discerning mind also helps you not to get carried away by what is happening outside, whether it's a fire station or wind. Or Sophie, for example. <laughs> <laughs> the other, nothing happens. So it, the impact is not there. Event is continued, but the impact is not there. I think I, I believe you understand that. The purified state of the mind naturally moves to the right thought, right speech, right action. Don't think it is impossible. Everything, this is possible. This is made possible by the great masters who have 
who they were they were the top of the class professors. You can say the professors, you know, who who goes very deep, who makes you understand each and every aspect. And they have written these texts and they have taught to thousands of the people. That is what we are uh, talking about. So when we think, act and speak uh, or live in association with the purified state of the mind, that purified state of the mind is known as the Satoguna. There are three gunas, the Satoguna, Rajoguna, Tamoguna. Satoguna is a serene state of the mind. Even if some thought of negative impressions contains, <coughs> but you now you have taken hold of the Satoguna because of the pure, pure states of the mind. So it doesn't allow the Rajoguna, which is agitated state of the mind, and Tamoguna, which is a dull state of the mind. How intelligently they have put this teaching. You see that if you you don't have any enmity, any irritation, any hesitation against me, for example. But now if your mind is in a dull state of the mind, it will cause irritation. And then we say, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean that. Are you getting it? So you see that the, the uh, so so now what happens with the pure states of the mind you follow your mind naturally follows what is right thought right speech and right action what is the ultimate result of right thought speech and action so no action in the world causes you any irritation problem in your life you know it. You understand it because all the information coming from the warehouse now comes from the purity. That is what we say the Buddha is full of compassion. Now see, Buddha is full of empathy or Jesus is full of love. Huh? He said love is God. So when you have a right thought, speech, right thought, right speech, and right action, it produces uh, every action as uh, is right, and that always fills you with the joy, peace, calmness, happiness, and that is the process of evolution, because you continuously in every situation you rise in awareness. You don't fall in awareness. You know, it is freedom from freedom from the attachment and detachment. So let us understand a couple of these different pure states of the mind. Impure and the pure state. Impure mind, impure states of the mind is always looking happiness outside. Pure state of the mind is always aware of the happiness inside. That is one thing. It internal inside means I maintain my awareness. Seeking happiness or the pleasure outside has to result in suffering in one way or the other way. Inner happiness brings the peace and calmness. Pure states of the mind inspires you to continue the journey of the self-discovery and impure states of the mind disturbs that journey. So now pick up a couple of the pure states of the mind. One we say the mind, sat sattvic mind, the sattva, raja and tama. Mind contains these three qualities. So, in different proportion, at a given time, while expressing thought, speech, and action. Now, it is like, you know, you, you have a rope and you have a string. So, think of the three strings in a rope. So, they are made up of three strings, made up of satoguna, the serene state, 
agitated state and the dull state. So what normally the pure states of the mind does, it minimizes the agitated state and uh, the dull state. And the serene state is full of awareness. The satoguna is characterized by purity, clarity, and balance. It is free from the mental disturbances and capable of experiencing the joy, contentment, and equanimity. Sattvic mind is conducive to the spiritual growth, self-reflection, and the pursuit of the knowledge. Now see if the mind, if one is talking, questioning from the impure states of the mind, oh, where is the feet? Tell me. So what answer you can give? First, you have to purify the mind. So we don't evade the answer, but we give a different answer to both these of them. Second characteristics or second impure states of the mind is focused and concentrated. Naturally, it is focused and concentrated. How much time it took you to, uh, to log in and attend the session? What was the thought before uh, attending the session? Did you contemplate and reflect what was the last session? No, no, I'm just telling you. You all are mature. So mind has the ability to focus on a single object or task without distraction. It is, and you remove the impurity, there is a natural focused mind. Equanimous, or I could should use equanimity, mind with equanimity. So that takes your mind away from strong likes and dislikes mind, strong irritated mind, strong hesitated mind. It takes your mind away from that. Equanimity, you know, okay, uh, wind noise is there or fire station, or what it has to do with me. They are, they are not intentionally causing trouble to me. They are not chasing me. I, I understand that. So whether there is a noise or no noise, Equanimity is there. The impact of the external disturbances is not on the, not on. The, it, it can be also applied, you know. Your honey is uh, excited and reacting and you say, okay, okay, very good, very good. So it's better to calm down the honey rather than say something to get more irritated. Who does it? Everyone. No, I, I always do it, you know. or I challenge the irritation. So when you challenge the irritation, obviously you are talking from the impure state of mind. <laughs> Understanding is required, my friends. Knowledge is there. <laughs> so equanimous mind allows one to respond to life challenges with wisdom, with grace, and with resilience. That is also the pure states of the mind. Compassionate and empathetic mind. Compassionate and empathetic mind. It is not that, you know, because I am related to you, so you are compassionate and empathetic to me. You are compassionate and empathetic. That is has become the nature of your mind. Is more important. You know, sometimes we are compassionate and empathetic to one group of the people, not to the second group of the people. We have a wonderful friend who is very compassionate and empathetic to Democrats, not to the Republicans. What we have to do, <laughs> what we have to do, with, so that is, so compassionate and empathetic, every compassionate and mind fosters, fosters the inner harmony to the mind in a sense of purpose in the life. So this is a, uh, then intuitive and insightful mind, that comes at a last stage of the purity of the mind. Your mind is so much pure that the person is sitting in front of you, maybe too far. So mind, that mind, pure, that pure mind has an ability to perceive the deeper thought pattern in you. And then uh, the person knows how to respond. 
So people say, you know, oh, he has the ability of thought reading. No, it is because of the pure mind it comes. Detached and detached mind, you can say detached and non-attached mind. That is also the pure mind. It's free from excessive attachment to the people, objects, or outcome. You know, sometimes you see that, you know, uh, in, uh, in the relationship, you know, one person in that relationship is extremely attached. So his mind is obsessed with that kind of an attachment. Why don't you know? Why please you take a cup of tea? I don't like to take a cup of tea today. Now I'm not in a mood. No, no, please take it. You know, I, honey, I love you. I have made it for you. You know, sometimes they are pushy. They are too much pushy. So that causes a lot of problems in our life. So that is why we say detached and non-attached mind. Non-attached mind. Loving and devotional mind, understand this, loving and devotional mind, whether you talk of the Jesus or Buddha or great masters, they always have a loving and the devotional mind, devotional, devotional, de recognition, devotion here means the recognition that ego mind cannot bring any result. So hence I am devoted to the entire existence. Devotion, I don't want to take devotion in the form, devotion or prayer or worship, not in the form of a religion or a cult or a dogma. No, it has nothing to do with it. Understanding, knowledge, understanding. And then we have a calm mind. Calm mind is a state of mental tranquility, free from hesitation, stress and anxiety. Peaceful mind. Peaceful mind, you can say. Inner stillness is there. There is a difference between peaceful mind and calm mind that we will take later. Another part is that it is not a consumer mind. It is a contributor mind. Two days ago, I just leased a vehicle. And uh, so you have to do it silently. I'm opening up because of so that you should understand so i'm a consumer you know as a customer i have gone to lease a vehicle the guy very very young 24 years old i don't know how excellent in his behavior and attitude he is not being pushy very straightforward loving smiling and joyful so once the lease is done, and I said, you know, I must pay to him something. A lot of people. So I put my, uh, I put my hands into his pocket. I'm just telling you, not bragging. That it must be done. I must be a contributor, even if I am a consumer and a customer. The giving nature should be there. So I'll be sending you the for survey. Uh, I said, yes, I will give you the five star rating for you. I will specifically mention about you. Don't leave that. Relaxed and calm mind. Always relaxed. Always. Your relaxation cannot be disturbed by any situation, condition, relationship, people outside. We are talking of that relaxation. Kind, kindness mind. Uh, you can say the mind full of kindness is there. Because it, and the most, how these pure states of the mind enters into your life, there are two main principles. One is the discerning mind and other is the dispassion mind. They also come under, you can include them into the pure states of the mind. If you have a discerning mind, yeah, the life is wonderful all the time, in spite of the external challenges that you have. And the dispassion mind. Discerning mind, not a judgmental mind. Discerning mind is opposite of judgmental mind. Judgmental mind makes the judgment based on the preferences of likes and dislikes, attachment and detachment. Discerning mind filters out 
Here is the purity and here is the impurity. And then you choose the purity. Joyful mind. Whatever the work you are doing, joyful mind. <coughs> this is in brief. I have talked a lot about the impure states of the mind, so I've started thinking, oh, let us pick up uh, what are the pure states of the mind. And if these pure states of the mind can, can be achieved in our life, think of this. That is why we ha I had started talking about the six conventional practices for purification of the mind. So in that context of the purity of the mind, you have to uh, go through in our following sessions. We will talk about uh, how these six conventional practices helps us to purify the mind. Please close your eyes and let us start our journey with the relaxed and focused mind, not agitated state of the mind. Eyes are closed and uh, find out the place, the right place, position and the posture. Adjust and align your posture with the external place, position of the body. And in that state, we are going to be comfortable. Now understand, you know, again, little deep, deeper way of when I say you to look at, look at the neck joint, go to the root of the joint and go to the root of the joint and experience root of the joint and experience what I say sensation, comfort and steadiness. You see, what is the goal? You, if we do not understand it clearly, uh, mind keeps on wandering. What is, you see that what I said? You look at the shoulder joint. I started with the body part. And then that helps us to rise in awareness. Why rise in awareness? I'm not saying be aware of, I did not say be aware of your room and the walls and the TV and the computer. No, they are outside. <clears throat> So we rise in awareness by change in direction of the mind, of the mind from outside to inside, from outside to inside. We don't pick up any object outside. So the mind rise in awareness, mind rise in awareness. And because of the rise in awareness, because of it, you experience sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Make sure. We, we did nothing. It is a shift. Shift in awareness and attention. Once you keep this knowledge, when you are doing a practice of being comfortable, it will take you very deep. So in meditation, we are not at all concerned with any object, person, relationship, things, objects, etc., etc. Look at the hip joint, be there. Now you did you understand? You know, you, you drive your car to home. So, and once, then you park the car in the garage. So we have just a fraction of a moment when I say look at the hip joint. Okay, look inside. Okay, be aware of sensation, comfort, and steadiness. We jump from the body part to an experience. Why? Because the change in direction of the mind. Mind has started moving inside. Moving inside, you moving inside only with only one. Moving outside with trillions of objects, people, and things. And when we are aware of this movement of the mind, it results into sensation, comfort, and steadiness. You try this. You sit down. 
every day at least for doing the two, two steps, being comfortable and being carefree, even for five minutes, and you will see you will progress. So be aware of the entire body. Again, body is an instrument we are using like a car. We look inside, experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Being carefree. Second step. So now you should become the teacher to yourself. The masters in Eastern wisdom, they say, no, you have to be a teacher to yourself. So being carefree, I give another example of being metaphor of being carefree. I have been giving you the thoughts and many people have done it seriously. Uh, the, the highway, I gave an example of the traffic on the highway and you're standing across the road. Now what I'm saying in being carefree, you know, the space or sky is there with the birds flying. Uh, that seems to be a good example. The birds are flying. That sky continues to exist. Continues to exist all around the bird. I believe you are clear. So we have a mental space as container and the thoughts, feeling, and sensei emotions as contents, as birds. Did you get it? Yes. Now, what, what you should do for the sake of doing, in fact, it is not doing. The moment any thought, the moment any thought, feeling, and emotion arise in the mind, it arises in the mental space. Arise, be aware of the space behind it. Simple. And it will separate it will separate what it will separate the content from the container why we are doing it because they are already separate i'm going deeper because they are already separate but due to the impurity of the mind they are understood as one and that causes a lot of problem. So this is another way of separating the thought, the content from the container. You are not doing anything. You recognize. They are already separate. You recognize, oh, thoughts are coming and going, like the birds are flying in the sky, nothing happens to the sky. Nothing happens to that deeper layer of the space of the mind. It is not at all affected. That is why one moment you are hesitated, the second moment you are calm. So that calmness comes from that space. I believe you, you got it. Yes, so that is these two steps. You can do it a couple of times during the day. Oh, let me see, being comfortable and being carefree. It will become your habit. And once you replace the crazy habits with the new habit, but what happens, because I told you, the warehouse of that mind contains trillions of impressions. And that is why we use the breathing part as a breathing. So looking inside the forehead in the space. Now pay attention, the entire body should be in the state of comfort and steadiness. You are looking into the forehead in the space. Two. You, then you are dropping mantra mentally shanto hum three and the fourth you are engaging the mind in uh, four different levels and the fourth one start breathing quick and short breath through both the nostrils into the chest
Continue breathing. It's a gentle and a short breathing into the rib case, maintaining the steadiness in the body. Uh, focus inside the forehead and dropping Shantoham. Mind is dropping Shantoham on one hand. Deeper inside and keeps on, continues the breathing. Continue, please. Continue, do not stop. So if the mind, mind say, no, I cannot do it for a longer period. So tell the mind, tell the intellect tells the mind that, no, I have to do it to purify the mind. And can't you keep on doing it? Do not stop in the middle. So that resistance comes from the impurity of the mind and the purity by the patience, by the endurance. Continue breathing. You will. Ex you have unusual experiences. Acknowledge it, accept it, but continue. We have to break that comfort zone. Continue, please. And stop it. So the next step I, I added here is the mantra, the contemplation and reflection. When the mind lives in a deeper state, of emptiness, it is very easy for us to contemplate and reflect. This contemplation, reflection uh, creates a very strong ground for the purity. How by knowledge? Asatoma satagamaya. So I told you also in the beginning, asatoma satagamaya. First we chant, recite this mantra, asatoma satagamaya in the mind. Then we look for the meaning. Meaning is moving from the false to the real. And then we go to the knowledge. Knowledge part is the contemplation. So at this moment, at this moment, you simply understand and say in your mind, whatever is changing in the world in relationship to my body, mind, intellect, thoughts, they are false. And what is unchanging, it is, it is, real. So we don't know the real, but one thing, we know what is unreal and the false. So it is always good to get rid of the, or just become aware of the false. Any hesitation, any duality, any conflict, it belongs to the false. Asatoma satagamaya. So the entire journey is moving from the false to the Real Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. You have to do millions of times. Why? 
I'll tell you. Move, that means moving from Soma Jyotirgamya, moving from moving from ignorance to wisdom. Ignorance means simple word. I do not know who am I. So we create, we put a strong doubt in the ego mind, which says, I'm good, I'm this, and I'm that. So that doubt in the ego mind will help us to move from the ignorance to the wisdom. That is one explanation. We move from the mortality to immortality. How it is possible that by moving from the false to the real, moving from the ignorance to the wisdom, and third line says, oh, I, I can be immortal. So where the knowledge is required. What is mortal? Body, mind, intellect, ego, past impression, purity, impurity of the mind. And what is immortal? Real self. So we discover that real self, that is, and the real self is immortal. Real self is non-changing, eternal, all-pervading. That is the meaning. It does not mean that, you know, body is immortal. So sometimes the ego mind says, oh, my body mind will become immortal. And in that state, you see, when you contemplate like this, it goes very deep. And you, you feel as if you are absorbed within. And that is the moment we can take, we can go to the next step, looking at the head and the neck and feeling the sensation, comfort and uh, sensation, relaxation and stillness. Now it is very easy for you to experience that. Why it is easy? Mind is pure. Moving the mind on the right arm, sensation, relaxation and stillness. Moving the mind on the left arm, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Moving the mind on the chest and the belly, the middle portion of the body. Be there. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Moving the mind on the right leg. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Moving the mind on the left leg, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. We rechecked it, that everything is in order. Why? Well, we have to pick up uh, the last step, but little. Again, it appears very simple, but it's very challenging. Very simple is what? You look at the breath going in. Drop shantoham on the breath going in. Shantoham on the breath coming out. So what is very important? You are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. One, every time you say Shantoham, you know the meaning. Keep the meaning inside. I am the peace. I am the peace. And at the same time, you see the good space. I talked a couple of times. Our masters have created symbolic images, form, for peace, for happiness, for love, and we, we know about the love you, I love you, we have a symbol. So continue, Shantoham. Breath is going on at its own. You're not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Body is already in the state of stillness. The mind is already living within. In that state, you are dropping Shantoham, Shantoham.
So when you do the practice on your own and you continue this practice, keep a half an hour window open so that check you are able to check how long you can extend this that this state of shantoham 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 shanti 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 Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand. Your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both up arms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes and side up arms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down, my friends. We'll share our experiences. How are you, Sophie? Hello, Gary. I'm good. My mind was taking a, a pad of its own at some point, but I brought it back. Um, I feel good. I have a question. Is there a way that you can uh, distinguish the tendencies that you built up in your life and the one from previous lives? At a higher stage. When we are already settled, so-called uh, one meditative state out of seven higher states of meditation, we can distinguish. That is one on simple answer. Okay, thank you. Second answer is again very simple. You are stressed, you are in stress, you are agitated, and you don't know what ultimately is the cause of it. You don't find the near cause in your life. Why this is happening to me? So it has some relationship with your past life. Okay, thank you. How are you, Charlie? Hello. Uh, I've been struggling with, I think probably sort of dull mind this week. Um, I found the meditation very helpful. Good. To come back, um, but I've been struggling with my practice. Yes, yes. So the moment we find the struggle, I have to inquire which impure state of the mind it is, why it has become the impure. So it is because of the thought process. Certain thoughts causes this impurity, and then we have to go a little deeper. From the why I have this, it may have a strong likes and dislikes, maybe a strong attachment and detachment. So if you think along these lines, first thing that you ease the mind, and after easing the mind, practice meditation, it will help you. How are you, Anne? Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. I think it was on close for my friend. Yes, I feel fine. I I was quiet. <laughs> Quite good. I quiet and peace. Peace and good, yeah. Yes. It continues like that. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really good. It should continue the peace and calmness, which is very natural to the mind, that they are known as the pure states of the mind. And you saw it impacts too much to the, your physical health, to your mental, emotional, your social level. How are you, John? If you're rich, I'm fine. 
I have no annoyances tonight. Okay. No wind. Very no good. fire station. <laughs> no. <laughs> no monkey mind. Oh, Everybody very should. good. That's very good. So it simply indicates the mind has gone deeper. Mind has gone deeper. It did all the steps with awareness and attention, and then it has entered into the pure state of the mind. Well, that, that is how we, we, it should have a clear understanding. If we have a clear understanding, we can definitely advance in this journey. How beautiful. How are you, Meet? I feel peaceful. Very good. And I feel Shanto Hong is such a beautiful, I don't know how to describe it, yeah, but it helps yeah. me to, to yeah. really come to a place of peace. Yes, yes, very, that's uh, important. The knowledge is supported by, you know, the word or mantra is supported by the knowledge should be present during the practice. Mm. While you are talking, I am in peace. So my I am in peace is not supporting my expression. <laughs> you see that it is not supporting my expression. And that is why, you know, sometimes uh, you are irritated and uh, you say, no, no, I'm not irritated and people notice it. Yes. So that is why uh, we used to, our masters lay great emphasis. No, understand the mantra, keep that knowledge, maintain that awareness of the mantra during the practice. And that reveals, uh, that mm -hmm. changes the nature of the mind. That is what the meat is saying. Very good, my friends. That is all. Thank you very much. Namaste to everyone. We will meet again next week. Thank you. Yes, thank you.